That ends the period for oral questions. We will now move on to topical questions, and I call Mrs. Brenda Heal. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. And can I ask the Minister how valuable the Open University is to the NI economy in terms of upskilling? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I thank the member for, for her question. Um, first of all, uh, we should formally welcome the Open University uh, to the local higher education family. Um, they are a very welcome uh, addition. Um, I believe they would bring a, a, a variety in terms of, of the offering that, that they make. Um, they have a good footprint in terms of research. They have um, one of the highest, uh, if not the highest, uh, student satisfaction ratings uh, in, in the United Kingdom. And as we move um, towards uh, promoting different types of, of learning uh, in terms of higher education, as we try to link up higher education with a revised form of, of apprenticeships, I believe that the Open University in particular will be, will be well placed uh, to, to take advantage of the changing policy environment and to provide a lot of solutions uh, for the, the local economy. Ms. Hale for supplementary. I thank the Minister for his answer. And, and given that upskilling is of immense importance to the growth of our economy, how is your department engaging with the Sector Skills Council to attract and retain talent and skills for growth in our key industries? Again, I thank the member for her question. I mean, there are a range of sector skills councils uh, in Northern Ireland, I mean, eSkills, um, SEMTA. Um, this morning I was also with uh, Creative and Cultural Skills uh, at, the, at the Lyric Theatre for their launch of their ambitious uh, plans to increase um, the, the number of jobs in that sector in, in Northern Ireland. So ongoing work and discussions with the sector skills councils is absolutely critical uh, to the future of, of, of uh, policy uh, development. And also, the more we can actually hear a collective voice from industry in relation to training and skills requirements, then the more efficient and effective uh, government is going to be. I call Mr Jimmy Spratt for a topical question. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. In light of last week's uh, joint university showcase in the Long Gallery, attended by many members uh, around this chamber, uh, how will the Minister uh, ensure that the higher education sector, which is vital uh, to the Northern Ireland economy, uh, continue to thrive? Well, I, I thank the member for his question. I, he was right to highlight the success of that uh, showcase last week, and I congratulate the, the committee for uh, facilitating that. Um, the university sector is going to be critical uh, for the future of, of the economy, um, and in particular, research and cutting edge, cutting edge international research will give us uh, that, that real. Uh, boost and impetus as we, we develop further in terms of the knowledge-based uh, economy. We have sought over the past number of years to make a number of strategic investments in the universities. So we, so we have increased the number of undergraduate places. We've increased the number of postgraduate awards. So we're now essentially facilitating a doubling of PhD opportunities that are supported by the state uh, over the course of, of, this, of this decade. We've also increased uh, research funding across a number of, of, di of different programmes. But it is worth stressing uh, to the member and, and, and the rest of the House that on the back of the decision to, to freeze tuition fees and a note this is something uh, that across political parties um, pe people are keen uh, to, to follow through with, including notably his, o his own party. That, that means we are diverging from the, um, the, the, what's happening in the rest of the UK in terms of funding arrangements. So we have to fund, to fund that locally. Uh, to date, the executive has a financial package that has allowed us to maintain funding of the universities while freezing tuition fees. And as we move to the future, no doubt, to continue to freeze tuition fees, it's important that we at the very least continue to resource our universities at the current level, if not to increase funding in a strategic way to allow them uh, to, to expand. What I want to avoid, and I'm sure everyone agrees with in this assembly, is that there's no point in freezing tuition fees and ending up in a situation that people can have to pay less but end up with a lesser product. We want people to pay less, to stay at home, to go to university, but to have the best education that they, that they can possibly have. Mr Spratt for supplementary. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Speaker, thank the Minister for his answer so far. Uh, what recommendations uh, for specific measures or actions uh, will the Minister bring to executive colleagues uh, to ensure that the commitments in, enshrined in last uh, week's all-party motion calling for continued support and investment in higher uh, education are met? Again, um, this is very much a, a, a partnership. It falls to, to my department to deliver the, the higher education strategy, which we have set out, which I do, does believe uh, gives us a, a good um, foundation on which to, to move forward. And, um, 
we have also made a number of different bids for, for resources. In turn, um, as, as the, for the executive, in particular, the finance um, minister, uh, to, to look at the overall funding package that is available uh, to uh, the department and indeed uh, in due course uh, to the, uh, the universities. Mm-hmm. Members will be aware that. Um, we need to start considering uh, what happens in terms of the next budget round beyond um, March 2015, and discussions are already underway between departments as to how that uh, would look. And certainly, from my perspective, issues regarding uh, higher education funding are perhaps the, the key issue in, in those discussions. Well, Mrs. Dolores Kelly for a topical question. Uh, thank you, Deputy Speaker. The Minister will be aware of the University of Ulster's work and linkage with the Confucius Institute. And uh, in, in relation to exchanges between teachers and students uh, and how that could be funded, I, I realise some of it crosses uh, with the Department of Education. But uh, if this uh, region is actually to do business with China, there is actually be better promotion of the culture and ideas and relationships. So I just wonder uh, what representations, if any, have you received from the Confucius Institute or indeed colleges in relation to put, uh, actually implement some of their programme of work? Well, I thank the member for her question and she indicates what is a, a major area of uh, potential expansion for um, our local um, higher education institutions. Um, the University of Ulster have been very proactive in terms of the establishment of the Confucius Institute uh, in, in Korean um, and opportunities will flow from that in terms of, of both teachers and, and pupils at school. And this also reflects that universities aren't simply an issue for, for my department. They're something that, that are a resource available right across all aspects of life in Northern Ireland, never mind just in, ter- in terms of, of government. There's going to be a showcase event in relation to this uh, on Friday in, in Parliament buildings, which will be another, another opportunity to discuss exactly how we can be of assistance uh, in this regard. But overall, I'm keen to promote uh, internationalisation. It's one of the key themes within the higher education strategy, and it works in two different ways. We want to be attracting more students from overseas to come to our institutions. We have a, a, low, a small footprint um, compared to other regions, it's, again, it's a legacy of the Troubles. Um, but equally, we want to ensure that as many of our own students have the opportunity as part of their studies to experience uh, other societies. And um, we, we run um, almost like a parallel programme to Study USA, which is Study China, which allows um, our own students to access opportunities in, in what is still a, a, a very different culture, but also a, a radically transforming and successful economy. Mrs. Kelly, for a supplement. Uh, thank the Minister for. Uh his answer. Uh, Minister, you mentioned in particular uh, foreign students. You know, I just wonder, in terms of their accommodation needs, what's your assessment analysis and analysis in the provision of such accommodation? Well, b- both are, uh, shall we say, campus-based uh, universities um, do uh, have fairly reasonable uh, footprints in terms of, of accommodation. Um, in some ways, that they are better placed than some uh, other universities elsewhere uh, in these islands. Obviously, there, there are issues in, in relation um, to that at present um, in and around the issue of, of, of the Holy Land uh, in, uh, in South Belfast, which is an issue for both Queen's UU and also FE colleges, but also for society as a whole as well. It's not simply a, 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 an issue for the, for the institutions. One of the other key accommodation issues is around the relocation of the, the University of Ulster from Jordanstown uh, into in Belfast. Uh, and what will be the, the housing implications that flow from that, including for international students. And discussions on, under the uh, aegis of um, Belfast City Council are uh, ongoing in, in that regard to ensure we are planning effectively for that. Well, Mr Barry Michael Duff for a topical question. Uh, thank you, Goromayogutta. I'll ask Can I refer to the fact that the Minister yesterday announced a review of careers advice, career service, etc., uh, following yesterday's uh, debate sponsored by the Employment and Learning Committee. Um, but can I ask the Minister um, if he might look at, and his department might look at, ensuring that careers advisors are fully skilled up in the CAO system as well as the UCAS system? Uh, I thank the member for his question, and we missed his contribution from the debate yesterday, I have to say, but um, it was much poorer for that. Um, <laughs> um, the, the member touches upon it, I mean, a, a key issue, which is 
more than just an issue of careers, but to, which is ensuring a, a, a natural flow of students on, on the island. This is not about us directing students either to Great Britain or to, to, to uh, the Republic of Ireland, but ensuring that um, they are fully informed of, of the choices. Um, we are not at present sending as many students uh, southwards that are coming from the south uh, to, to the north. So there is scope for an expansion in terms of student flows in both directions on the island of Ireland. But for that, that to, to happen, um, we do need to have proper information around uh, university admissions. But it's more than simply a case of the knowledge of how the CAO system works. There's also the issue about the, the recognition of, of qualifications, uh, which is an, an ongoing source of tension between the two jurisdictions. Michael Duff for supplementary. Thank you, uh, Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister to perhaps enlarge on those tensions? Because uh, the issue of equivalence and how A levels are regarded by some universities down south does present a major obstacle to students who wish to go to university or third level institutions in the south. So, can the Minister perhaps enlarge on those tensions and, more importantly, how they might be resolved? Well, um, I thank the member for his supplementary. The, the, this is something that uh, John O'Dowd is leading on, on behalf of my department and, and his department. I'm more than happy to, to support his efforts in, in this regard. My, my understanding of the issue is that, uh, at a political level, um, there, there's no real resistance that uh, our counterpart, Rory Quinn, accepts the arguments that have been made. This is essentially an issue regarding the independence of the universities in terms of their admissions policy, and that's where the, the, the blockage cur currently lies, and efforts are, are ongoing uh, to, to try to remove that. Call Mr Ian McCrae for topical question. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Would the Minister um, give an assessment of the Youth Employment Scheme in Northern um, Yes. Um, more than, more than happy to. It's something that has been uh, discussed uh, already uh, on, under our questions. Um, this is very much uh, designed to, to try to break this, this vicious circle where um, young people can't get a job without experience uh, and they can't get experience without a job, so they're essentially caught uh, in, the, in that uh, vicious circle. Um, if we don't intervene, there's a real risk of, of the lost generation emerging because we have invested in people's skills to a certain point uh, at a general level. But unless they are able to apply those skills, uh, those skills will go rusty. And not only will the individual have uh, a longer period in terms of, of benefits, uh, but society will lose the, the, the benefit of their uh, contribution and, and, their, and their particular skills. So there are three different strands to, to the scheme in terms of uh, subsidised employment, work experience and a skills development um, piece. Uh, and uh, our uptake of all three is encouraging. And I'm particularly pleased at the level of support we've had from employers who have offered uh, places. And uh, employers really appreciate the importance uh, of investing in the future, not just of our companies, but the future of the economy as a whole. Call Mr McRae for supplementary. Uh, Will the Minister agree that now more than ever, given the level of um, youth unemployment, that um, pro programmes like this are, are certainly important? But would the Minister also accept that if, if give, there are um, flaws within, within that, that he's willing to um, address those, certainly to deal with, with that youth unemployment issue? Yeah, um, the member makes a very valid point, and it was for that reason that we had a post-implementation review um, over the course of the summer of the Youth Employment Scheme uh, to make sure that it was uh, meeting um, the, the purposes set out uh, for it, and we made a number of adjustments uh, in, in relation to it on, on, on the back of, of, of that review. And certainly, I am happy that performance has, has increased significantly uh, on, on the back of the changes that we, that we have made. But certainly, um, that's something we have undertaken already, and uh, we're more than happy to do again uh, as we continue to monitor this, this scheme as, as it rolls out. Call Mr. Peter Weir for a topical <coughs> question. Uh, yes, can I thank the, uh, can I ask the Minister uh, for an update on the potential financing of the uh, proposed Cirque Theatre in Bangor? Um, well, the issue is something that is um, contained within my own department's uh, capital uh, allocations. Um, so we have the, the, the headroom 
in order to take, to take this forward. Um, a business case has been approved um, by myself and also approved by the Department of, of Finance uh, and uh, Personnel. So the monies contained are within my own capital um, all allocations. Uh, we don't need to bid to the executive for any additional resources. So um, subject um, to everything else being in place with the, the final stages of procurement, uh, everything is, should be set to go for early in the new year. Order time is up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Peter. Uh, that concludes question time. I invite members.